guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today is Friday, which means it's Fabric Friday, so let's get talking about some fabric. Actually, before we get started, we are on week 20. <gasps> Can you believe how much time has passed since I started this little series? Honestly, it still feels like I'm in week six, but we're in week 20. Wow. So uh, with that in mind, like I think I may take a little bit of a break from Fabric Fridays, but that's just so I can keep up my two videos a week and give you guys some of these actual DIYs of all the things that I've been telling you that I want to do. I've been slowly getting through them, but I know that I can get through more. So we might have a little break in a couple weeks or so, so I can just show you everything that I've been making and maybe give you a little fashion show. What do you think? Anyway, onto the fabric. So a couple of couple of weeks ago, probably about a month or maybe even two months ago, I was talking to you guys about how I wanted my very own version of the Acne uh, Velocite uh, Shearling Leather Biker Jacket. Really comfy, really cosy. Every year that kind of jacket is like the popular thing for the winter because it's stylish and it's warm. It's like warm AF, really, really warm. But who's got two and a half grand to spend on it? Not me, I don't. I found a pattern from Stylark and I was like, yes, this is gonna be amazing because it looks exactly the same. I'm just gonna make a few adjustments. Instead of making it just the fur on the cuffs and the collar, I'm gonna make the whole inside, the whole lining is gonna be fur. So a little bit of a challenge because it is quite a challenging sew, but I'm very excited about it. You already know about that. You saw the fur that I got, the black fur a couple of weeks ago, but I was looking for a leather. And that's what I'm talking about this week because I found one. I found a leather that I'm happy to say is going to be perfect, perfect for this jacket. So this is the leather, it's like a nice black leather, a little bit textured, it's got a tiny bit of shine to it, it's not like super super dull or matte, it's got a little bit of shine, it reflects like quite well and yes it took me forever to find this because I don't really want to just go and buy some something online and then every store that I've ever been into like recently I've just been looking to see what they have. Um, I was getting quite frustrated because I haven't really done much traveling in the last couple of weeks, I've been at home and uh, doing other projects um, so I haven't really been able to get out there and have a look at leather so I went to Gold Hawk Road this week and thought you know what if I'm gonna find leather anywhere it's probably gonna be there because of the concentration of shops together but also the range of qualities you can get super cheap fabrics there but you, it goes all the way up to like the super expensive I'm like probably never gonna even afford one meter of this because it's like 300 pounds a meter so there is a big big range of fabrics there so I thought you know what not only will I find all the real leathers but I will find the faux leathers, the fake leathers, and that's what I'm looking for. So I spent basically the entire day looking at the 30 or so shops on that street and finally came home with some very, very excited. In hindsight, I probably should have brought an actual leather jacket with me because I do have two real leather jackets which I've had over the years and I really like the feel of those ones and I wanted something to be as similar as I could get to that kind of feeling, but not actual leather. So let's talk about what I'm gonna do with this, this pattern, and uh, what challenges I might face in the future. Ooh. I've got the pattern up here on my iPad so I can actually have a look and see what it is that uh, this pattern is gonna de deal with. So in case you don't know, didn't see the video or anything like that, I plan on making a pattern from Style Arc Patterns, which is an Australian uh, pattern making company. I really, really like their stuff. They, have, they bring stuff out all the time. The patterns are quite, um, reasonable in price they do pdf downloads which is great if you're on the other side of the world like me and uh yeah like they definitely uh have like updated quite trendy clothes things that are relevant now as well as like a whole bunch of stuff so um i saw this aviator jacket i was like that looks exactly like the acne jacket of my dreams um and i thought you know what i'm gonna have a crack i'm gonna have a crack i'm gonna have a go at making this it's gonna be really difficult for me because i've never tried this before but we don't love if we don't like get out of our comfort zone so it's for me it's all about like learning a new thing learning to master a new kind of fabric and um, and also mastering this pattern because if I can make this then not only have I saved myself over two thousand pounds because I didn't have to buy it but then it means I can make another one in a different color in a different style it's it just it kind of just makes me feel like it feels definitely worth going to the trouble to do it, then it's something for me to improve on. But let's look at the pattern and see like how easy or hard I think this might actually be for me. So uh, let's have a look. 
So from what we can see here, so as you can see, this is like the front page of the pattern. It's called the Carly Aviator Jacket, and I'm just showing you uh, basically what you get when you download it. Obviously, I'm not going to show you absolutely everything because if you want it, then you're going to have to go buy it. But um, as you can see, this looks exactly like how the acne jacket looks, which is perfect. So from here, um, if you haven't had a style up pattern before, normally there are like pages that have all the uh, details, but for the most part, the instructions are sometimes um, not that detailed. In this case, it looks very, very detailed. It shows you how to do the body and the constructions, the sleeves, the lining, how to put things together, shows you all the different pieces and where they're supposed to be. And the things that are super difficult, there are images. So here they're showing you how to do a jetted pocket with a zip. Uh, here they're showing you how to do the collar with the buckle and I guess here this looks like um, what is this this is more construction of the collar so that is something really really good uh, for anyone who is about to do something that they have maybe never come across for for in a pattern so I feel confident that with this and maybe a couple of Google searches because sometimes the sometimes the instructions are not quite cutting it and you have to do a little bit of extra searching. I do that all the time. Sometimes I'm like, how how even though? And YouTube is a really good help because usually there's there'll be someone there who can show you on video. So here they're telling you what exactly the uh, jacket is, uh, the kind of notions you're going to need, and the kind of fabric so here it says wool leather shearling or any jacketing fabric so I'm starting with leather and and fur so that will be my shearling but what I might do before I even cut into this is try it out in just like one of my cheaper fabrics because I've got a whole section of cheaper fabrics but something that's kind of a little bit thicker um, probably the same kind of thickness as leather so that I can maybe just make one version in that so I know that I'm putting everything together. I can try that one on first and then I can cut into the leather. So I'm not just going to first time do that but I do definitely want to get stuck into this one as soon as possible. So we will be doing that. That's why we're so excited. So it looks here that um, yeah most things are quite straightforward. We've got pocket zips, we've got eyelets. Uh, I've never made a belt before so that should be fun. So I need to go get myself a belt buckle and a neck buckle. So I'm learning a few new skills here, making a few accessories, something that I can also expand on in the future like how to make your own belts and stuff like that. So that will be cool. Um, and then here it tells you how much you would need for your size um, as well as what you need for lining and fur if you're just doing like collar cuffs and hems because I'm gonna be using the lining as the fur the fur as the lining I'm gonna use the 1.25 plus the um, plus the extra that you need for like the collars and stuff because I'm planning to have a completely fur inside that will be my lining so other than that what I can see the things that make it difficult is that probably just the amount of things that you have to do in this pattern and also just like placement of things like normally when you place a zip it's going straight up you don't often do a zip that is a asymmetric zip um, I've never I haven't actually worked with a double double ended zip and I think that's what it said it might not have but like I don't often work with open ended zips uh, because normally jackets that I make have buttons and not zips which is weird when I think about it so I should probably start making more jackets with zips probably um so yeah so that will be something i don't think it's going to be super challenging i just think it'll be something that i might need to practice once first before i go ahead um yeah and the thing that i'm mostly just worried about is just the leather it it doesn't leave any room for mistakes once you make a hole in it that hole is there it's not going anywhere else so i really need to make sure that when i'm doing this seam or this stitch it is the right stitch because there's no do-overs um that hole is there luckily i've got quite a bit of the leather i've got enough that i can recut something if i do make a mistake but i'm not trying to make mistakes which is why i'm going to make a practice version or a 12 first so just so you can see the difference between um real leather and the faux leather here is uh, a leather jacket which i wear quite often i got this from boda skins uh, a couple of years ago and it's like a really really nice leather jacket i believe hold on tell you what it is so yeah this is a premium napper sheepskin and yeah so this has lasted me really really well the leather on this is really really um quite soft but it's also very very sturdy and here as you can see it's been quilted so I will be looking to all these different kind of things and techniques that have been used on leather jackets that I do have and hopefully trying to put them into this so when I pick up my 
other leather here. This is like a little bit more shiny, but I think this is also because it is brand new. So I think after like a bit of wear and being out in the elements and stuff, it will start to look uh, like this. But to be honest, there's not really that much of a difference. What I would say is that the leather jacket has just like slightly more texture in the grain. You would get that in something that is a real leather because it's, there's going to be natural texture in that uh, in the skin. Um, but you can get faux leathers that have natural texture. I did see one that was very similar. It was a little bit more grainy, but it was thicker and it was too thick for me to comfortably wear it as a jacket so this one not as textured still a little bit but thin enough for me to wear it as a jacket but thick enough for it to still maintain its shape and to be hard wearing so if you have an item at home which is something you're looking for you want it to be similar to that bring it with you it will only help and I should have done that but I didn't um, but I made a pretty good guess and uh, yeah so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do with it we've had a little look at the pattern uh, we know what it is all gonna look like together which is gonna be great and we've compared it to another leather something something that's real leather that I have and I wear quite often so now that I've told you that let me tell you where I got it from how much I got and how much it cost okay so as I was saying right in the beginning I went to Gold Hawk Road so that's where I got it from now I go there whenever I can there are so many fabric stores there so if I know that I've got like a lot of fabrics like a list of things that I need to get I will go there because I know that I could probably get everything in one trip perfect and I find that the prices there are very reasonable but can also be like astronomical depending on what you're looking for uh, but for the most part most fabrics you will find it in one of like the 20 or 30 stores there if you can't find it at the right price in one you might find it in another but there are also some times like you'll find things there are differences because I also went shopping there to get a bunch of stuff for Halloween because I've got some tutorials coming up soon so um so yeah I uh yeah I, I had a big shopping trip bought a load of stuff and looked at about 30 different leathers before I was happy with this one. So the store that I got it from is A1 Fabrics. It's one of the first shops that you get to on the Fabric Street if you're coming from the station. Um, and it is one of my favorites. Quite big and they always have such good quality fabrics. I have not bought anything from A1 Fabrics and been disappointed. Um, and I normally, what I normally do is I'll find a fabric that I like, but before buying, I will check all my other stores that I like going to. And I often find that I'm going back to A1 Fabrics. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that shop. And upstairs, they also have a haberdashery. So if you wanna kind of do everything in one go, you can just buy it all in one store. So, you know, one of my favorites. So this cost £6.50 a meter, which I think is a very good price for faux leather because I found something that was very similar in another store and they were charging me £9.50 and I thought, okay, I'm going back to A1. So um, yes, £6.50 for this and I picked up four meters. Now I know four meters is a lot more. We just looked at the pattern. It looks like I'm only gonna need two and a half meters, but I've got that because I want to make some other leather things going down the line. Um, now that we're getting into autumn, although it still feels like summer sometimes, don't know what's going on with weather, but like now that we're getting into autumn and then into winter, things like leather are gonna serve me really well. So this is the first thing I'm gonna make. And with any leftovers, I will probably look in the leather skirt or maybe even like a leather pair of shorts because that would be amazing. And I also, I know this is really off topic, but I saw a really cute leather beret the other day and I thought oh my gosh I'm gonna learn how to make one and it looked quite straightforward so maybe I will do some research into how to make leather berets and make myself one of those as well and if I do I promise I'll let you guys know don't worry I got you so uh yeah that's how much I bought for it so I bought four meters all together it cost 26 pounds at 650 a meter and I picked up four meters and uh yeah that is it I'm very excited that I've got that all that I need to do now is get the uh belt buckle I'm trying to decide what kind of hardware I want. Do I want um, gold hardware or do I want uh, silver hardware? I know you can also get like rose gold hardware um, and you can also get like copper or you can get like different different kinds of metal like maybe a gunmetal grey. I'm not quite sure so I know there's like stores that you can get all that hardware stuff and the zips uh, so I will bring a sample and I'm gonna just kind of try and compare but like it would be quite cool if I could get maybe like all black you know like black zips and everything but maybe I'll try a contrast and 
and go with like gold because then I've got the black leather with the black fur and the gold hardware I think that might look quite nice uh, I also think it would look just like quite standard but also quite nice with the silver hardware so I don't know tell me what you think what color hardware do you think I should uh, go for so that's like zips eyelets um, belt buckles things like that all the things that you'll see that will probably be made out of metal on the jacket because that's the next thing but that's something I'm probably gonna get in the next two weeks or so because I want to get cutting into this so I will probably make a shell and use what I have for the uh, for the practice version and then use all the things that I buy for the real thing and I swear as soon as I start making it I will put the progress on Instagram where you can follow me you can follow along my stories and when it's done I will do a little fashion show for you guys because you know I'm gonna want to show you anyway so uh, yeah w watch out for that video and watch out for those Instagram posts and stories because I will be letting you guys know because I've I've been so excited as soon as I found that pattern I was like yes so, so that is it for this fabric Friday thank you guys for watching to the end of the video if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button send me a comment let me know what color hardware do you think I should do gold rose gold silver gunmetal gray black white I don't know let me know and if you haven't already then subscribe and I'll see you guys next week with another fabric